From fabulous Los Angeles, California, Hollywood, home of the stars, the magic factory where dreams come true, culture capital of the world, jewel of the Pacific, it's the Adam Carolla Show. Yeah, get it on, got to get it on, no choice but to get it on. Mandate, get it on. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for telling a friend. Thank you so much for uh, going through our website, going to Amazon, clicking through, and uh, book marketing, book market, and uh, marketing, and market, and market, and all that good stuff. Good to see you, Allison Rosen. Hello, Adam Carolla. And Bald Brian. This is going to make your pussy smell a lot. Far and away, number one on Twitter, hashtag top drop. Max Muchnick is here, and uh, he is one of the creators of Will and Grace, nominated for... An- 83 Emmy Awards. Wow. Won 16, but nominated for 83. Well, he only won 16. He only got 16, yeah. Barely. I mean, just three more than a baker's dozen. So uh, Max will be in here in a couple of few, and we'll talk to him. Um, Lots of good stuff to talk about. First off, had this uh, weird revelation while I was driving the other day. I was thinking about our dear friend Norm MacDonald. I was thinking about how talented he is, how funny that guy sounds hot. he is, but how completely insane he is. Yes. He does not drive himself. He does a Clarky. lot of gambling, does a lot of crazy tweeting. Like he led with he doesn't drive himself. He's he's <laughs> anywhere. No, th- that that is Howard Hughes. Look, no, it's a contributing factor. That's just what you led with. That was funny. Yeah, for me, well, <laughs> living in Los Angeles and not being able to operate a motor vehicle puts you at a wild disadvantage. I, I just, I couldn't, could you imagine one week I mean, the sort of being confined to one week of not being able to use your car or to have somebody it's crazy sort of trot it, you around. It Couldn't makes you so Couldn't dependent work. on other Insane. people. Insane. So that's Norm McDonald. And then my next thought was his first name is Norm. And I thought, how ironic. He's the most abnormal person on the planet. <laughs> Norm, like the norm. His whole life, it's an ironic take on his name. His whole life is. You're right. And he doesn't live near a farm. Huh? He's the least from a farmer with the uh, McDonald part. But uh, Norm is, he's the least normal human being I've ever met. He's not the norm. He is nothing Mm-mm. but the norm. It's just parentheses outside of the. That's right. And the Norm McDonald. Yeah. And I don't know if there's a higher likelihood of your kid being abnormal if you name them uh, Norm. Interesting. Versus Bill. Do you know any other norms? I don't know too Personally? many. Personally? Normans? Uh, you know, all, the only Norman I know is Schwarzkopf. But I got to figure that one out. Although, I think Boomer Sison's real name is Norm, and I think he's a little, he's, he's, not, he's not goofy. Yeah, but Lynette he's... made this argument this morning <laughs> over waffles. I'm sorry, I'm not buying it. I didn't it. mean to step on her toes. She loves a Southpaw, and she's a big Cincy <laughs> fan. <laughs> well, then she must love Boomer Sison. She always says it's like Sison to... Um, Collinsworth, that's yep, what she that's, looks at me, and her, her and I. Yeah, that's the kind of connection we have. All Unspoken right. bond. That's right. We'll try to figure it out. But either way, Norm McDonald, the ironically named Norm McDonald. All right, uh, speaking of Boomer, in sports, uh, halfway into the season, everybody, and uh, another Monday night football game, this time my Rams. This time my Rams. The Rams almost pulled it off. Yeah, they could have pulled it off. Did you watch off. any of the game at the well, end? Well, I got, I got home – uh, I got home to watch the last two minutes of the game, seeing how the game was nine to fourteen with uh, Seattle, who's in first place, heavily favored. Seattle. Heavily favored up. Uh, then people tweeted me quite a bit that there was a fifty-yard field goal that was missed, and I was going to be pissed. Not as a Rams fan, but as uh, one of a God's human. children. That's right. <laughs> Does and- the Rams fan add? You know, exacerbate the anger. I'll tell you why it doesn't help. Because we can go ahead and watch this thing sail over the motherfucking upright one more time. This is 50 yards out, by That's the way. Of a leg, too. Over the upright at 50 yards? Well, let's see if it's uh, fair or foul. We'll no n- chip shot. We'll never know by the angle. And there it goes directly. That looked good to me. But now, if you want to note it, you know, here's how you know the thing. Here's how you know. Watch, show it again. Watch the referee that's on the right side, meaning the side away, away from, from the upright, he doesn't go out and signal. He, looks he walks at out guy? and looks at the other guy. Yeah, what did you see, guy with cataracts who's 11 feet to my left, <laughs> as it went sailing over your head at 30 miles an hour into the night air? Watch if you pause it. First off, 
who knows if, okay, you can see him looking at the guy to the left, but who the fuck knows if that's good or not? Now, here's the thing. It looked good to me because it was going inside to outside, and it looked like it traveled. But from the angle, honestly, I have no idea. There's no possible way to ever figure this out, ah, except one. Of uh, Laser beams? <laughs> That's right. Water cannons? <laughs> Some right. kind of camera? What? Mm. Are we smart or are we stupid? Now, the reason I was pissed off is I then tuned in 10 minutes later to find my Rams down on the goal line. Oh, Let's with, talk football for a second. With 30 seconds left, they stink. No, but. this is actual. They had the ball fourth and one play to win the game, one yard line. They had been rushing for over five yards to carry, which is very, very good for a team. And they had one play, and then a backup quarterback in the game. So what do you do? Yeah, give it the backup quarterback. Let him throw. Also, the thing where it's the last thing you should do, you have the ball needs to move 34 and a half inches mm-hmm. forward. Why make it travel 28 yards in the air? You know what I mean? To cover that 34 inches. That fucking fade route is insane. And Seattle did what all good teams do, which is they just blitzed. Instead of just going into the weird prevent thing, they went right at the quarterback. But you only have 11 yards of defense to cover. All right. 10 yards of the end zone. That's what you were thinking. Exactly. What I was thinking is if that fucking 50-yard field goal, (laughs) if they'd extend in the post and that thing was good like it looked to me, would have caromed in or maybe just made it clean – then instead of the score being 14 to 9, the score would have been 14 to 12, in which case they would have simply kicked a field goal, yep. which would have been a chip shot as mm-hmm. close as an extra point right here on third or fourth down. They probably would have done it on third down in case there was a bad snap. Yep. And then they would have won the game 15 14. Instead, they throw a fucking f- f- retarded fade that just sailed out of the back of the end zone. Now, I'm a 49ers fan, so this hurt me as much as any, maybe more than Rams fans, because at least my, we team don't still, care. my team's still in. I I want you guys to win badly. Yes, it would have been nice. But we could have won if the upright was extended. Did that look bad? Did that look fair foul to you? I I don't want to see it again, but I think it was from the other (laughs) hash mark, which would have made the angle even more favorable for the Rams. The ball is traveling inside to outside, so if it caroms, it's a good chance it's going to carom in. But there's nothing we could do except for extend the fucking piece of thin wall steel. All right, so there it is. Now, uh, this is uh, week nine, and there's been two of these on a Monday night already. Mm-hmm. Never going to end. Feels like more. <laughs> a lot more. We're going to know of every more. single one. <laughs> I received right. so many tweets about this. <laughs> don't people want to know, though? Like, don't. What, yes. And here's the thing. How come there's never a fucking discussion? Like, if I was the kicker, I'd be like, are you nuts? That thing was good. Here's why it's going to happen. I think something's going to happen this year. Jeff Fisher, the coach of the Rams, is on the competition committee, which is in charge of reviewing rules. All so right. I, I th- if there's ever a chance, I think this is the year. All right. Now, uh, questions. The team that victimized. Young, uh, young Sonny. Oh, and also um, a correction that I don't understand, but um, I've told people many times, look, first off, I have no idea what to do at the airport. I don't know what works, what doesn't work. I take the shoes off, take the belt off, that kind of stuff. Um, dumping the water, dumping the soda and the drinks, can't bring the bottle of wine. I travel all the time. People go, oh, it's a local vineyard. This is our vineyard. We made you this wine. But I go, I can't bring it yeah. back with me because, you know, I'm the, I'm the new, fa- new face of Al-Qaeda. Mm-hmm. So why would I ever be able to do that? But I told people you can buy food on the other side of the line, but you can't bring it across. Just because the thinking is, is if, if I can't bring a motherfucking water bottle that has a splash of water at the bottom of it, why should you be able to bring a one foot long sub across the security line with you? People have been tweeting me like crazy. Oh, I, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's something specifically about liquid. Like you couldn't bring soup probably. Perhaps but some kind of fishy swab. Isn't somebody going to make a plastic hoagie? You'd think. If you were going to make explosives, easier to make In it out condiment. of a bun, yeah. right? A C4 Quiznos. But, yeah, I mean, you got a lot of bun, you got a lot of meat, you got a lot of whatever. If you were making like a nice grinder and you could make that bun completely out of you, plastic explosives, what what the fuck's the difference? I mean, don't you think? Well, what you, about a burrito? Burrito's a bomb. Right? It's a Mexican bomb. <laughs> What? The gut bomb. Yeah, I mean, look at one of those big Chipotle burritos. Don't you think you could oh. make a version of that to <laughs> blow a hole in the side of the fucking that's plane? A, that's a bomb. Mm-hmm. That's a bomb. <laughs> that's what happen. I'm saying. I mean, honestly, 
in terms of like, look, if someone just showed you a burrito and then showed you a bottle of water and went, well, what do you think potentially could cause more? Well, that could be C4. That could be plastic explosives. Why? Why? why People why? bring food from home on the plane, though. I don't know what the rules are. I don't know uh, when they decide. Uh, I'll tell you when they decide. When <laughs> somebody brings a burrito bomb onto a yeah. flight, mm-hmm. then there will be no more food. But up until that point, the water, and maybe you go, look, you can't x-ray water. But then here's my argument. Okay, you've taken the nitroglycerin that I'm carrying from um, the Milwaukee airport back to L.A. that the uh, group of tired white guys are carrying. Okay, fine. You know where you put it? In a fucking hopper in between the two conveyor, conveyor belts right behind where the chick is standing the whole time. I'm looking at the bucket of mm. explosive water that's in there. <laughs> well, what if it is nitro? What if what if it what if it is going to just blow us all up? Like what if it's glycerin? Like on, on a busy day, you could do more damage of that with blowing up a thing, a garbage can full of you know whatever with the snaked line with the security line the snakes around that you could on almost any plane. It always makes me uncomfortable when you mention this cuz it's true. Uh, it's so it true. Me. There's a huge line of people. Now, the rally is and I agree with me cuz this is my idea. I want full credit. Um The way you kill people with bombs is you put a bunch of rusty nails and bolts and things in it. And you really couldn't do that with this, the water. On the other hand, if in it's an explosive, if it's too dangerous to bring on the plane, if it's potentially too dangerous to bring on the plane, why then just set it in between the entire traveling public and the airplane? (laughs) That, at least be consistent. It goes into one of those bins that they keep at the nursery school is for th- toys. Is there thought that if it really is ex- explosives, you're not going to be willing to part with it to get on the plane? So therefore, if you... They have no thought. Right. They're... And what about those little strips that sometimes they put in the water or pass over it? Remember? Or when they make you take a sip? Yeah, they used to make you take a sip. I'm just saying... Take the tongs out and put it in the lead-lined fucking bucket that's out in the tarmac. Don't just set them all. I see them all. Mine ended up, I fucked up and threw one in my backpack, and it ended up in just the general hopper with 28 other bottles that could have all been explosives, or theoretically are there because potentially they could be. All right. Uh, phone calls. Steven from Cleveland, you want to just uh, start yeah, at the top, work our way down the bottom? Steven, 24, Cleveland, what's going on? Hey, Adam, big supporter of the show. Thanks, man. Uh, I was wondering uh, what boxing tips you're going to give Sonny when he gets old enough that he needs to know how to defend himself. It's just a waste of my time. He came up, he came up tonight to uh, tell me about his uh, Cub Scouts and uh, to tell me about uh, how they're making a boat. Well, I was skipping my rope. I go skip my rope every night. He comes up. Sometimes he whacks the uh, heavy bag. Sometimes I hold the focus pads for him, and then I do this cool move where he throws the punch, and I loosen my hand up, and it goes sailing across the room. <laughs> and I go, whoa, you know, I just took my hand off with it. You know? <laughs> no more delightful thing can a kid be engaged in than that one big punch where the thing just goes sailing across the room into the curtains, you know. Now, just as he thought he was an all-star baseball player for yeah. grounding out to the catcher, does he think he's uh, the next Ivan Drago? Uh, to be fair, the pitcher could have jumped on it, but the catcher was a little more aggressive. Sure. But he still still got inside the He was the already in a crouch, so he was like sprung up. Yeah. Uh, he... Uh, I showed him a little bit of form on the uh, on the heavy bag, and he punches okay. Um, he he takes a little pride in it, and one of my better, I actually, my uh, I've realized it, although uh, and, uh, it, it doesn't work, but um, my greatest trait is actually teaching people because, um, and let me explain why. Go ahead. Uh, no, I'm laughing at you saying it doesn't work. Because you said teaching, not training. Teaching, training, same. I mean, because most of the guys I worked with, they knew how to box, but they couldn't convey ideas, you know? And I would draw these sort of right, pictures just having for a, people. Yeah, having a talent doesn't necessarily mean you can show it to someone else. That's Not, its own skill. When you're a boxer, you can barely form a fucking sentence. And I would get these people, like, lined up, and I'd get that left jab out in front of them. I'd get their right by their head, and I'd say, now, when you throw that right, 
pull, pretend you're pulling a handle and you're, it's like a scissor action, like a mechanical action. Hold that left out and then pull that handle and snap that thing like you're snapping a towel. And I'd go, look, you know when you throw your jab, it's like a towel. A towel, if you just push it out there, just hit somebody. Yeah. But if you pull it back at the right second, you yeah. snap it. It creates a snap action. That's what you need. And, and I could draw these pictures and people got good at what I was telling them to do. It doesn't work with things like shutting the fucking lights off <laughs> anywhere, but it works good for uh, boxing training. So uh, I, I've i coached up Sonny and he's okay. He's the, he's the sweetest boy in the world. He's a world-class puss. Um, I brought him with me today on the uh, double-ended board because I was uh, doing my... Uh, I broke my jump rope, so I was doing my uh, double-ended medicine ball routine, which is I get the medicine ball, and I get on the board that has the cylinder. The balance board. The balance right? board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got like the Quaker Oats uh, cylinder yeah, made out of hard yeah. plastic sitting fulcrum. in between it. Yeah, and uh, on the other side, it's a half a snowboard on each side of it. And I ride on it, and I take this medicine ball, and I try to go around my back, and my plan is 10 times one way, 10 times the other way. In under 20 seconds. That's my plan. I look at the clock. And I go, <laughs> do you do it? <laughs> yeah, I can do it. Um, do it in 19 seconds. I can't do it in 17 seconds. I'm right. If I, if I don't fuck up and I don't catch one of my hips or anything like that, I can take my, like, 12-pound medicine ball and go round this way and around that way, but I got to do it on the balance you like thing. Shakira. Yeah, my hips don't lie. <laughs> and uh, I grab, what I'll do is I'll grab Natalia and throw her up there with me, and then sometimes I'll swing her around something, and she can ride it. Sonny gets on, like, ha, 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 and I'm like, just ride, just feel it, just balance. I hang on to you, you know, just lean and stuff. But he, he wants nothing to do with it. So... And, and I know what it is. He has the puss gene, and she has the daredevil gene. And when they get their driver's licenses, he's going to, you know, be announcing, everyone buckle up, even though I'm backing down the driveway. This car will be not go up. anywhere. Right. So everyone's, I'm looking at you, Dan. She's going to be, uh, every time it rains, she's going to be at the Costco parking lot doing donuts at 2 a.m. That's what the daredevil gene is it's just it's just simply a gene it's a cautious gene versus a let's catch some air gene i, I had friends that had the cautious gene not many they're made fun of and ridiculed and and pushed out of the herd as it will which one are you where i started with a, an insane uh daredevil gene crazed daredevil and it didn't matter it wasn't to show off i had to do it I like didn't, adrenaline junkie kind of i had uh what what would happen was there, there were things in my life that there were hurdles that needed to be overcome and they were never uh, scholastic hurdles. They're always like, I got to jump my bike off that loading dock behind Gelson's <laughs> and important endeavors. important endeavors. <laughs> and I, I wasn't that I had to get people together to watch me do it. Oh no, I had to do it. So the way I was wired is I would ride my bike, my little BMX bike by the, by the um, back of the Gelson's and I'd see that yeah, 42 inch loading dock that would, you know, may, higher than three feet, maybe lower than four, maybe right around four foot. And it was, you know, where the trucks, where the semis would unload, they'd have that little dip in the cars, the semis would back it up. And it was back in the good old days when everything didn't have to have a uh, wire and barbed wire and fencing around it, security and everything. It was just open. And if it was a Sunday and they were closed or it was in the evening or where well, there was nothing going on, like a, there wasn't a semi unloading, it was just empty. And there was no railing or anything. It was just there. And when you rode past it on the street level, you just kind of see it in the big drop off. And it'd be the kind of thing where I'd ride past it and I'd go, man, I wonder if I got the guts <laughs> to go off that thing, like just to get a run at it and just go off it, you know? And I thought, oh, no, that's a, that's a little bit scary. And then I was intrigued. And this is, uh, you know, I didn't have a helmet or elbow pads or anything. Like, if you're going to eat shit, you're going to eat shit. And I thought, no, what's the way to go at this? Fast? You don't want to go too slow. If you go slow, you're just going over the handlebars. But pull up too hard, maybe you pull too, back too far. But it bothered me. It bothered the shit out of me. A and puzzle. I had to do it. I just had to do it. I had to do it. And eventually, I just did it. And uh, I I had many of many episodes that way. That but if how'd I, it go? Uh, that, that episode went pretty good. The, uh, stairs at the church that I had to clear on the same bike after I graduated the sixth grade went horribly awry. I hit both sides of the concrete wall and got all fucked up, but I still had 
to do it's it. It's interesting. I mean, it sounds like a, a, th- a motivating thing that was a, a it's good that you have this compulsion, but it's a little bit OCD. Would you agree? This thing where it's like, I have to do this thing now that it's in my head. Yeah, I stood um, on my friend. Even when I was like 16, my friend Steve had a, had a house. I mean, his parents had a house up in the hills and they had a swimming pool. And it's like kind of small, hilly backyard, kidney bean shaped, kind of narrow swimming pool. And there was a chimney that was sort of in inboard the uh, edge of the roof about six feet and it was up pretty high about five or six feet and I would jump off the chimney into the pool which was fine you had to clear a little bit of concrete but it was no big deal but I decided I need to do a flip (laughs) and then I decided that would be scary because going upside down over the concrete would not and and you could jump too far too because the pool kind of dipped in and I just thought well I got to do this man and I stood up on the uh, on there for a long time, and I remember at some point there was like a party going on at the house, and I just went out to the back and stood up on top of the pool in my trunks, and no one else was back there. I just stood there alone on top of the chimney, and I just stood there just staring at that pool, trying to sort of navigate the sort of concrete, you know, too far, too close. Don't push too hard, don't you know, but push hard enough to get out there. And then I did it. Um, and I did. I used to be wired that way to to quite a great extent it bothered me if there's something that bothered me I used to um, one of my big ones was I used to ride my unicycle off of things all the time off of uh, little slightly smaller loading docks and things like that but one thing that always fucked with me is I wanted to ride one off a school bench the regular kind that had that weird fiberglass cap on it from back then like a metal base and they're a little bit higher than your your average bench yeah like a playground school bench playground bench and there were there were you know about 10 inches wide maybe 11 inches wide about eight seven eight feet long and had a little fiberglass cap on them and they're up maybe about 16 inches and I knew I could ride right off it but what I didn't know is if I could get up on my unicycle on it and what I knew was is if I got to the end and I tried to hop up on my unicycle that if I took my one foot off and stepped on it I could easily go right or left because at the beginning you go right left like kind of hard when you first when you jump on and if I went half off I'd eat shit and I'd eat shit pretty good like right there like I I, I could sort of weigh what was going to happen when this thing happened but it bothered me it bothered me for a long time and then and then I did it so sometimes I would eat shit sometimes I wouldn't but it would always bother me and I'd always have to do it and when it came to Something like a fight. If somebody said, we're going to fight, I'd say, then we're going to fight. And we just go fight. And that's just how I was. I would never, I wasn't a weirdo. I didn't go like pick fights. I didn't, you know, go, you know, go after cops or do stupid shit like that. But if, um, you know, I, you know, if somebody, like I said, if somebody said, I'm coming over there and I'm kicking your ass, I'd go, come on down and I'll be right here. And I'm just waiting for him. So you said you used to be wired, Had the, you used to have the daredevil gene. You feel like you don't have that no. anymore? No. Not anymore. Although, I'd probably still fight somebody if they wanted to fight. But uh, no, I don't have the daredevil gene anymore. I feel you know? like outside of bars, adult fights just don't happen that much. No. I used to see them once in a while you know, at a bar or something. And yeah. A couple guys getting a scrap. But of course, there's booze and probably going after the same girl or something. So mm. Yeah. Some igniter. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't have it. I like to race the cars. That that's uh, that's about it. But you know, you you try to make that as safe as possible. Uh, Stephen, Stephen, uh, yeah, I'm here. So so I'm gonna teach Sonny how to punch, but he's gonna be a puss. That much I know. Well, I'm a puss too, and I was just from one puss to another. I was just yeah. All right. I, well, I, you I guys, you're gonna be a puss. I just it behind asking for advice for a uh, seven year old. So. You well, with you guys, maybe you can be uh, puss pen pals. Like he can write puss you letters. Pals. He can write you letters. Like I opened a shoebox and a moth flew out today. I scared the shit out of myself. <laughs> and then you write back, "Oh dear God, what did you do when you came to?" <laughs> I called the fire department. Yeah, well, you can tell ta- tales of the puss. That's only prudent. Yeah, it was like it was, you could tell all all sorts of great stories about like you're in the front yard and you dropped your keys and right as you bent over as you're standing up the mailman walked up behind you and scared the shit out of you oh my god oh my god what did you do yeah <laughs> tales of the puss 
with Stephen and Sonny. <laughs> mm-hmm. New eight, new uh, new podcast on the network. Oh my God! My neighbor wow. hung a new wind chime, and I'd never heard it before. Yep. And all of a sudden, a gust came around when I was watering the lawn. <laughs> I almost jumped out of my skin. I was up in the middle of the night, and I knew someone was down the hall. Someone who also lives in the house. But then when they they came down the hall, and I jumped anyway. Yeah, that's right. Had to give away the cat. <laughs> Turned on the bathroom light and walked across the room. Scared the shit out of me. Yeah, Tales of the Wuss with Stephen and uh, and Sonny. So that's how he's wired. And Natalia, sadly, not wired that way. Like I said, does the uh, did it to me again just the other night. Does the I want to launch myself off the bed Superman style at you. And then as I'm in the air, do that move where you look away and pretend someone else is coming. So, it, so you scare the shit out of me. Nice while I'm in the she air. She asked you to do the move. Her thing was an interesting trajectory, as I've spoken about before. First, she said, well, let's uh, lesson learned. First time when she was two and a half or three, I stood by that bed and she said, move it back. And um, it was funny because uh, Nanny Olga was reminding me she didn't even know how to say go backwards. She said less forward. <laughs> because she had a limited vocabulary. She's two and a half or three. She said, less forward. And I took a step back and she said, less forward, Dada. And I said, "I'm all right. And I kept taking, and she just kept waving me back at age, I said, two two and a half, three. And then she got a run and she did a Superman off the edge of the bed and she ate carpet. (laughs) And yes, that's a euphemism for going down on another. No, she (laughs) fucking went face first and thing and she was crying. And I said, well, don't push daddy back so far next time. You got to keep him in range. I told you I wasn't going to be able to get you, and you won anyway. Something like that would be the lead story on Tales from the Puss. That's right. Is it Tales from the Puss or Wuss? Are we cleaning up for sponsors? Uh, wuss, Puss, doesn't matter. Okay. So I uh, I then uh, started doing this thing where she'd do the Superwoman dive, and I'd catch her, and she'd want me to catch her and swing her around and then launch her <laughs> back into the bed as high as, high as I could. And just for fun, I started doing this move where I would, I'll act it out. I would just lean forward. She, The bed is, you know, three feet off the ground. She'd get running, and I'd be standing good six, seven, eight feet away, but I have long arms, and I would lean forward, and she'd do a head-first launch, and right when she launched off the bed, as soon as she got to that point of no return, just as her toes were leaving the edge of the comforter, I would go, Molly girl! And I would turn and her face would have this look of horror. Like, oh my God, I'm sailing into this guy's knees and he's not looking. And I would do it with like, I would do it with Lynette. Like, oh, Lynette's home. And I would turn and she'd go. Oh. And um, so at a certain point she said, daddy, daddy, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. And then she would start running at me and I'd have to kind of time it. And she'd go like she'd fake jumping. Like, you don't do that. Don't do that. And I said, no, I'm not going to do it. And she started running again. And right when she got to that point where it was like, again, it was sort of, sort of like trying to time a pitcher when you're stealing a base. Yep. They're trying to hold you there. But at a certain point, they're making a move. Yeah. And when she made that move for the plate, I would do the move or oh, God, hey. And she'd do that face. But after a couple of those times, she started requesting it. <laughs> She said, do the move. Uh, I like being scared. I mean, she basically at age four and a half went, do it. Do that move that scares the shit out of me when I'm in the air. And it, as if it was it was exciting enough, her just launching herself off the side of the bed. No, no. She, she needed a little she wanted up. a little more. Wow. She Good wanted luck. that danger. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now Light the pole on fire. I'll cheat death once again. Yeah, so what you have there is not any kind of, well, she saw that episode episode of Caillou where he uh, jumped this motorcycle over the sandbox. No, and it's not like, well, you encourage her by, no. You don't think it's it's video games making her do it? When you have twins, you realize very quickly all these assholes with their PhDs don't know fucking shit. It has nothing to do with anything. Sonny's a puss. She's a daredevil. That's the way it is. Sometimes it's the guy that's the daredevil. Oftentimes it's the guy. Sometimes it's the gal. That's the way this one works. No encouragement. No. 
It's you know what it is. It's right up there with your calves. My right one's the daredevil. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm switching gears here. There's people that have big, beautiful, knotty, muscular calves, and then there's people that don't. And they go. You're talking about Will Sasso again, aren't you? <sighs> thinking about him. <laughs> no, he's just a big dude, but with beautiful calves. Yeah. <laughs> Be- beautiful sculpted calves, all oiled up in bronze. Soft to the touch. It's calves that don't quit. No, what I'm saying is, is there are the dudes who have big calves. Look, there are plenty of guys who play in the NFL with calves that are much skinnier than Dawson's. Now, you, everyone has a thing. Joe Montana, legendary. Yeah, yes, chicken legs. Where'd you get those calves? Well, I was on the tennis team in high school. Like, you're 34 now, and you're an alcoholic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where'd you get those calves? Well, I used to wrestle. Not, you know, in junior high, you know, it's like, no, 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 no. I did gymnastics. I did ballet. No, 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 no. Lawrence Taylor's calves aren't as good as your calves, and he's done a lot more fucking running from, you know, defensive, for offensive tackles and the police, by the way, uh, than, than you. That, your calves are your calves. <laughs> that's, that's what you're born with. That's what you, that's what you got. Mm-hmm. Most of it is this. How'd you get bald? Oh, shampoo or the conditioner. Or Lightning. Sleeping on your fucking head or living too close to the power. No, that's just, that's you. Born. There's guys who have a thick head of, look, some guys go gray. They, some guys start going gray in their 20s. Many, many guys go you know, 24 years old and start going gray. Then there's the crazy guy who's 70 years old with a full head of black hair. Well, what did he, oh, you know what he did? Every morning. He started every morning with two raw eggs, and he walked them out like, I no, stop it. Shut up. It's just genetics. It's pure genetics. It's only genetics. He has the wuss gene. She has the daredevil gene. Now, here's our job. Try not to get her killed attempting to jump a snowmobile. Try not to hit. To hit, for him to get his ass kicked because he won't put his fucking dukes up when he's being provoked in the schoolyard. That's that's now the job as a parent. What got them there? That's nature. That's them. That's well, let me, who they are. Let me ask you this, because I used to do plenty of dumb shit that I saw on TV, usually involving WF wrestling or something like that. You know, put my brother in a chokehold. And my thing is, I feel like all of us as kids saw the same thing, whether it was movies or TV shows or video games or whatever the generational thing is. And to certain people, it seems like a great idea. Hey, let's go try that. And to other people, it doesn't see that seems dangerous or whatever it is. Like, yeah, the the TV, the input we get, whether it's TV or sports or or video games, must have some triggering effect. You know I, what? You know I what? Did I, more flying elbows off, you know, my hedges what, than any kid my age. What I think is, it, 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 it is the the modality that you express this through. So in the 50s, there'd be the Lone Ranger and Tonto. And you'd be treating your Schwinn like it was a horse. And your job was to jump from your horse to Tonto's horse while he was going down the street. You know, Later on, it becomes Batman, pow, sock, crack. And then later on, it becomes wrestling, WWE. E or F. It's, you're the same. It's the same guy. It's how it's expressed. It's expressed through whatever's going on. So It's like the symbol that is expressed through. Yeah, like I'm, I'm guessing if somebody loves music or loves to dance, it's going to be, you're going to be doing the Charleston or you're going to be doing the robot. It depends when you were born, if you love to dance. So those who love to dance will dance, whatever the era is. If you were born in the 50s... <sighs> <laughs> if you're born in the 50s, you would be doing Lone Ranger stunt moves. That's what I that's what I believe. So I don't think the Lone Ranger makes you do the move right. and I don't think WWE makes you do the move. It gives you something to mimic. Right. Whatever that is of your generation, that'll be your thing that you if it's Grand Theft Auto, you're going to go around, you know, with your finger if you're a little kid or whatever it is, you that yeah, thing of your generation. You must have that 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 thing to mimic in the gene that wants to go out and mimic it. All right, let's uh, power through a couple of calls and then we'll bring uh, Max in here and start making with the mirth. Hey, Brandon, 23 hey from Michigan. What's going on? Hey, not too much. How's everybody? Good. Hey, uh, had a quick question for you, and I know you hate podcast questions, but you guys are the best in the business. Just thought I'd ask, when do you think you should start selling advertising on your podcast? Well, I think when you can. 
He has Giovanni's voice. He does. Have you stolen Giovanni's voice? Giovanni and I saw each other yesterday evening and uh, wow. stole it from him. Oh. oh. I don't think that's true. No, no, it's not true. Yeah, not at all. I'm, but I'm it was cool for a second. Um, when you can find advertisers and people to pay you for mentioning their products, I think you should go ahead and do it. What are you waiting okay. for? I, I didn't know if you you know had any thoughts about number of listeners or, or anything like that. Well, you you try to you know look you try to build your listenership and you try to monetize your podcast. I I never looked at it as anything differently than radio. It's just you get people to listen. If you can get enough people to listen, you can get some advertisers on board, and then you can keep your business going. I feel like it's. I think we'd all agree it's probably less about number of listeners than it is about how many of those listeners are going to support your advertisers. Go out and click through to this or, or try this out for your free trial of this. If you have a, a listenership that likes your show and is dedicated to your show and is compelling content and they're going to support you, by all means, go to your advertisers with that. Yeah, there is a little bit of a new model in that back in the day, you know, whatever shows, you know, Dukes of Hazard would get 27 million people watching, but I don't know how many people went out and supported Budweiser or whoever was advertising. Now, look, never nothing wrong with 27 million eyeballs, but now it's about taking a smaller group, motivating that group, and, uh, you know, the fewer but proud. It's, it's sort of like... You know, I guess it's like what you want is SEAL Team 6 versus just a big, shitty, untrained Iraqi army. You know, you realize that a handful of guys that are motivated and well-trained with the right equipment can really do the work of thousands of men on the ground because they're just that good. It's when it comes to buying stuff? <clears throat> yeah, when it, comes to, <laughs> when it comes to buying stuff. No, um, yeah, but, you know, when we go out and do the live shows, I don't know how many fans we have in Seattle, but we get, you know, 14, 1,500 people through Seattle. Maybe we only have 1,500 fans in Seattle, and maybe we get every single one of them out there. Uh, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter to me. If, you know, if we said we have 25 million listeners, but we couldn't sell the second show, then it's academic to me. And one person more than the 1,500 after the theater sold out is sort of academic too, because there's not a, not a chair for them to sit in and not a ticket to sell them. So I'd much rather have the sort of few but proud, and I'd rather I'd, I'd love to have the large and proud as well. But it's a gain I, weight. I, I will take the choose. few and proud. Yeah. Well, I would rather have a small motivated army that I could call to action mm -hmm. rather than a large sort of passive group that really wasn't going to get involved. And as it pertains to advertising, do you guys feel, I kind of feel like if the word gets out that, oh, this, this shows fans, they're, they're, they show up, they're dedicated, they, whatever, they'll come through. I mean, that's, that's, I feel like it's a valuable thing. And what is kind of a small world, the advertising world, you know, people that's the buyers that spend the money. Agreed. When that I say buyers, I mean the ad buyers that spend, you know, choose yes. to advertise on the Adam Pearl or show. Or buy versus... a ringtone like Pussy Lips. <laughs> That's right. Go to AdamCroll.com. You can get our new uh, latest ringtone. Pussy lips. <laughs> All right, Allison, you are going to say something? Oh, I was going to say, but I do think the advertisers on podcasts want to know the numbers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I think perhaps you can try to convince them that, no, these people, there's a small group, but they're very motivated, but they're still going to want to see that there's a lot of people listening. Here's what they're going to do. They are going to give you a shot to move the needle, as they say. And it doesn't matter how many listeners you tell them you have. If the phone doesn't ring on their end, then they won't be interested. If you say you have a million listeners and they don't get a phone call, then they're not interested in re-upping re with you. If you tell them you have 100 listeners and all 100 call then they will re-up with you. So it's not necessarily about the number, it's about the percentage. Obviously, when the number's greater, then usually you can get the percent, yeah. you get a larger group, even if the percentage is a little off. All right, let's uh, take a break. Let's bring our guest in here. Max Munchnik is coming in, creator, Will and Grace, many other shows, and working on a bunch of new stuff as well. We'll talk to Max next. Mm -hmm. I have a tough one, and I have a retard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is really how it goes. Yeah, maybe that's good. But it's it really it 
falls down these very clear lines, okay? I did a thing called gestational surrogacy, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm married to a guy, and we uh, fertilize four eggs, okay? Four go into the surrogate. Mm -hmm. uh, two fertilized by me, two fertilized by my husband, Eric, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, two came out. One was biologically his. The other one was biologically mine. Is that perfect? Uh, that's kind of perfect. It's a bullseye. That's I the mean, plan, That right? is the plan. I, we had two girls, and I will say that I literally sobbed when the doctor told me that I was having two daughters. I mean, I just didn't see that happening. I just didn't know that that's the way that that was going to go. And, uh, you know, and it did, and it's perfect, and it worked what, out right. What so is who gave the... birth the tough one? What? Yeah. Which who one is the tough one? Uh, you, biologically, which one is yeah. the tough? Uh, yeah, mine. I mean, I'm, it's. Uh, now, I guess it's going out on air now, but you know, everyone's <laughs> going to know. But yes, the tough one is mine. But when you do the two and two, the the two and two, the plan is to get one or the plan is to get one. You can't because of Octomom. You can't do more than four anymore in California. It's actually a law. <laughs> thanks a um, lot, Octomom. Yeah. Yes, thanks a lot, Octomom. But you know, so you hope for one. Mm -hmm. You know, two is a good thing. Three is scary. Right. But two is also scary. Right. I, they don't tell you that two is scary. Yeah. And uh, when that's like real, that's real surgery when that's happening. What and so biologically you just yeah. realize how incredibly different everybody is and that's why all this sort of shaping and molding we try to do is sort of uh, i don't know what you do I, you know i don't know what you do with the tough one to soften them up and i don't know what you do with the soft one to toughen them up i well, mostly handle the pussy i mean i take you know i just try ironically to, like, yeah i know <laughs> exactly but you know <laughs> you know uh um I, I shouldn't have set you up for that <laughs> but but you know it, it's just um uh, it just worked out that way and and uh um it's also amazing because one looks exactly like my mother and one looks exactly like eric's mother i mean and what do you do and this is a politically incorrect question but i'm but it's true biologically as i've seen it yeah my wife and my kids have a totally different relationship than i have with my kids yeah. and she represents something much different to them than i do and i realize that i'm the guy yeah and maybe i'm overdoing it in the guy department and she's overdoing it in the mom department but there's a woman role and a male role, and it's almost like, I don't know, hormone replacement therapy or something. If there was two of me with my kids, no matter how nice the other one of me would be, there'd still be a void there, a, like a feminine void. Yeah, Do you try to at, fill that at all? I was absolutely worried about that. I mean, you, you know, I thought there is not going to be chick energy in this house, and it was a concern of mine. I mean, we're, uh, you know... Um, we're we're not the most manly manly men in the world. I mean, you know, we 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 we're okay with all of it. You know, so it's like I'm sensitive to what's going on with these girls, um, and I don't try to uh, you know push any gen any agenda per se. But but um, I was very worried about it. You well, know, is what, there, what was going to happen to two little girls that were going to be raised by two guys? Is there an, an attempt? Like, for instance, I was a Catholic big brother. I'm an atheist. but yes, I'm I a got, Jewish big brother. Oh, good. Yeah. we. I got involved in that program, and it was like, well, these boys need a man around the house to billion X, Y, and right. Z. Yeah. Taking the beach and buying Taco Bell really is what it turned out to be. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. is there ever any, like... Here is your female nanny who's going to come in here and rub her stink on you for two hours a day. They don't want it. They don't. They don't, they don't even want it. It's not what they're looking for. They don't, and specifically because of what I just said, you know, this gestational surrogacy, because one looks exactly like me and one looks exactly like Eric, these two girls sit at breakfast and dinner and they look at the family and everybody looks like each other. So they don't even... Uh, have that moment where they're thinking to themselves that something's missing there is a there is a character that's not here in fact the surrogate that carried the girls not related to the not related to them she's just the oven she recently is it her egg no that's not legal that's that's, oh, that's the, not oh because that would make them half hers that would be she would be the mother 
Right. You know, so you get you go through the catalog to get the egg. It's a buy now situation. Yes, you <laughs> you you get it. You get a code. Have you ever paid more for something that was donated? You know, <laughs> you know the way that that goes. It's like you uh, get access to a to a bank, mm. and uh, the, that night you go online and you just you look at at these women, these eligible women. What kind of information are you provided with? Um, uh, it's limited uh, at the beginning initially until uh, you get to the point where you say, this is the one that I want. I was going for all looks. My husband was going for all brains. Uh, he's a good looking guy. You know, I'm Jewy McJew, who's losing his hair, you know? And so it was just like, I just want him pretty and I can I can figure everything else out. You know, I'll teach them everything they need to know. Yeah, but you didn't know at that point there were even gonna be girls. At, I, at that point, you had no idea. But doesn't pretty make it better for everybody? I, yes. you know, it, it just look, does. But I'll put it to you this way. For a dude, it helps. Yeah. But I've worked on a construction site, cleaned up garbage, and dug ditches with a lot of good-looking, hunky dudes that weren't models and didn't have that in-between thing where they could just get a kind of cushy job as a receptionist at a law firm because they were so easy on the eyes. They didn't leverage it. I mean, they could They didn't used, leverage it. They, they didn't use it. it. Well, you they could have used use you. It. Yes, exactly. Look they at, did not leverage it. Not at all. But you know what? If you choose to use that, you can, you can do that. Um, so you get this catalog, you look at these characters, and you have to go for it immediately. On a face, you see their oh, you see their photo. You see, yeah, you see their uh, photo. Do you see their educational background? Um, it's very limited. It will say, you know, higher education, high school. Um, you know, uh, it, it's limited. And then when you get on board and you say, this, is there a price at that point? Yes, but you can like there's a there's some very it's not um, it's not regulated by any. A medical body so mm -hmm. it's a little bit funky and um, there is actually a system in place in New York where you can do Ivy League eggs okay and they're more expensive yeah sure. and people go for it and and those are in the the 50 and sixty thousand dollar you know uh, uh, you know area and and or you can buy like schleppy eggs at, for 15 you, you know, like the going rate is like day old. Yeah, day <laughs> something like that. Do the women know when it's been purchased? Yes, but they're these 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 are women who are usually um, they're not necessarily educated, but they are bright and they need money, and this is a way that they can do it, and they want nothing to do with you. They don't want to know you, and it's really an intense situation because when the magic happens, when it when it all goes down, and you know uh, it has to be put inside the surrogate, everybody's in the same building uh, at the same time. The egg. Everybody's in the same building at the, the same time, room after room. But why? we cannot meet oh, each other. Oh, because they have to harvest wow. the egg yes. at that time. Yes. It's not a bank yes, situation. Yes, you're, you're doing everything. Everything's fresh. So you, you, you get the egg straight from the chicken. It goes across to the, be fertilized, and then it goes uh, up into... Um, <laughs> right. You know, that's how it goes. So you it all it all happens, and you when you walk into that room... And, you know, gay guys also, you can't... You can't be in the room with each other. You know what? You, you know you have to make your sample in your room, uh, and you know I've I've even been around. Uh, you know, I mean, we did this six years ago, seven years ago, and oh, because you're you cannot contaminate your sample, possibly. Yes. So you go in there, and there's the porn collection that's that's there waiting for you, and. Ooh, they got the gay box. They got the gay box? No gay box. What? No gay That's box. That's an outrage. I yes. encountered the same thing. Question. I did, I did a sperm bank. To, no, oh. no, I did the sperm bank thing because I, I have cancer. And before okay. I started my treatment, I banked some sperm. And I went to one in Beverly Hills, which is a fairly liberal. There, I'm sure there's a fair amount of gay population. Yeah. No gay porn in the yeah. booth. I, I was like, what? I, do, they have, do gay men have their own fabulous reproductive centers? Like, what, <laughs> is there no... 
Is there no gay material for anyone? No, I guess we just it's all it's all bank stuff. Oh. It's all things that we you have in the bank. Bastard. No, it was terrible. It was mm. it was an absolutely crazy rough situation. Wow. Uh, but but very well. Very that's why you got to pack your own porn. <laughs> I mean, you just that's on you. I I travel with a porn what I call like a leather man, ironically. <laughs> but but uh, it's you know it's just What's something you name? should keep with you in case you break down or something like that. You know. There were no iPads in those days. Mm. I mean, that wasn't going on. Mm. You know, you didn't mm. travel with that stuff. Again, if you'd had your own porn with you, we wouldn't be talking about this right now. Are... But anyway, anyway, it was a learning, it was a teachable experience. It was a learning experience. It chose not. I'm to. here to help. You're externalizing this one, mm. Max. But I would think there should be a buy basket and a gay basket. Oh. <laughs> and all and <laughs> also it's a weird shit basket. And a weird, who knows? I don't feel I don't think there's an obligation to feed your fetish. But maybe I'm into horses. That's up to you. Yeah, wide, that, that's wide on you. load. Yeah, but what about yeah. me? Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is straight. In a gay basket and possibly a bi basket. That's what we need. Again, if you're going to be in your own weird shit, like if you like your own, if you like horseradish Scat on porn. your hot dog, you bring it into the fucking <laughs> yeah. ballpark. Okay. I'm not gonna. I'm and, not gonna. Right. And isn't a bi basket a straight basket? Yeah. It, I mean, that's not a gay basket. I mean, there's not. Yeah. We don't. We don't want that. I don't want the buys either. So yeah. I don't know who's going to claim it. I don't know about that. I don't. Know. No one seems to want to take that did, on. Did you guys have the same experience I did in the in the booth? The porn had all been stolen. The DVDs of porn were all gone. Really? Yes. I just sorry, I yelled, but I, yes. I, I was overwhelmed <laughs> by how skanky the uh, the magazines were. They were of a in wide bad, variety of in, fetishes too. They were cr in crazy bad shape, like they had been twisted and held, and yep. you know, like it, it was be it was I mean, yeah. I imagine this is all very expensive. No, they should provide to, you with fresh porn. Go to Kinko's, laminate the stuff, and oh. just put it in a bind, you know, and just make it mm. waterproof. Know, waterproof. Yeah. Also, I mean, to be fair, there is a dude with a boner in the straight porn. I mean, it's not like there's no, there's no croutons in that salad you couldn't pick out. You know, there's a little something there. I understand what you're talking about, but I don't know. Maybe the don't, lettuce don't, messes not, it up for him, though. Yeah, the yeah. lettuce messes up the yeah, croutons? I, I'm Can't not, just I'm pick not, them through? You, I'm not. I'm, you know, I just heard this the other day. I'm a gold star gay. You know, it's like, that's not, I, I don't want to go there. That's not interesting to me. Mm. Mm. So I stay away from it. Dude that. with a boner, not enough. All right. Well, dude with the boner is fine. It's you know everything else that's it's where he you puts know, it. Yeah, I mean I don't I don't want to I don't want tainted by titties. I, I just don't want to look at. And I've got daughters. I've got to be very careful. But I like to the think. The back next story. Yeah, I mean this is so heavy. I mean I've never talked about. I mean my poor girls, you know. But it's like, you know, i yeah I've got a house full of vagina. But I'm mm. in, I I'm convinced that there's a brain in there. It mm -hmm. looks like there's a brain in there. In I mean, the vagina? It's, yeah, it's crazy. Well, they uh, they insist. That's where it is. On spreading their legs. <laughs> yes, yes. I've been looking. Yes, there it is. <laughs> but it's just bananas down there, you know. And yeah. they insist on showing it to you from the second that they're aware of it. Mm. You know? Yeah, yeah. You better take us somewhere else because that's. It's not my weird. Show. No, no, I, I, I agree. It's usually where it goes. I'm with yeah. you. By this point, of the show. So, really on uh, the topic. so you make your sample. You make your sample. Drawing, and, drawing on imagination. You and you have a rich and vivid imagination. Yeah, and you, you do great uh, yeah. television. Yeah, for yeah Christ I've read, I've read television. Did, yes. Uh, the surrogate that you that you chose is that someone that you knew or was that a? That's actually what we were talking about before we 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 got off off track here. Was this I'm... this surrogate uh, who who becomes this really incredible part of your life because she's carrying your children, but she's just this girl, you know, from Texas that's that's married. They have to have had a uh, a boy and a girl, so they cannot have an experience where they give birth to something that they want. OK, or that they they haven't had they haven't had anything. Uh, you, so you, it's all familiar to them. <clears throat> but they so, must sign all sorts of paperwork before saying I that doesn't oh, it's, matter. It, oh, it's crazy. Yes. It, yes. But you don't know where, when the crazy kicks in. <laughs> and and they tell us, I mean, you know, she gives birth to to our children. We're represented in a court of law. There are five attorneys there. There's one for me. There's one for my husband. There is one for the unborn child, the surrogate, and then one for the case. And you then, and everybody signs papers, everybody gets, uh, you know, everybody says okay. So she needs, this is interesting to me, she needs to have had a boy and a girl. With the outfit that I used, but I, we... With, right, yeah. okay. So in their experience, you know, she's got a brood full of girls and a little baby boy comes out of her. I want this. I'm keeping this one. Yes, yeah. look at this. And that could happen. Look at what I made, yes. Right, so and she had a boy and a girl. Yeah, so she had to have had a boy and a girl, and they, we moved them all to L.A. because we didn't want the babies being born 
uh, in her state because if they had been born in her state, uh, the birth certificates the would, and would whatever. Uh, yeah, the birth certificate would have said that that there wasn't. You What's know, two the approximate fathers. cost of something like that? It, it's going to run you about a hundred and fifty grand a baby for her. For me, oh, I mean, for no, but I mean, yeah, with the egg that's harvested. And with the surrogate that Those you move eggs, out here, the eggs the eggs run you between twenty and thirty thousand dollars. She runs you thirty five thousand dollars if you're a human being and you want to be nice to her. Mm-hmm. It's it's a little bit more than that, even though the, you are told explicitly that you are not supposed to take these people on, but right. you can't help it. They're carrying your baby, and you really don't want her eating jalapeno poppers, you know, <laughs> right. uh, at month six, and uh, you know she's shitting her brains out and and doesn't feel well, and you think. Right. You know, something. How often? What's the protocol? Like, how often would you see her? Well, we flew uh, to Texas every for every appointment. Um, You you know, we had the means to do that. Uh, Some people don't aren't involved at all. There, There are like, you know, those VVIPs that don't want the carrier to know. I, I happen to, you know, you know about mm-hmm. a couple of those those people that they don't well, want. Well, because she knows who you are, so at some Very point well. she could get drunk and go, I want to talk to my 15-year-old daughter. No, I want to, you know, I want, you know, my, I'm giving birth to Elton John's baby. Right. You know, I mean, is, is a, but, but. Uh, Who's actually, gayer, you or Elton John? Oh my God! For sure he is a neighbor. Really? For sure he is. But I want to make something clear about him. He. I happens, thought you were gold star gay. Uh, He's platinum. Is he yeah, no, I, you know, I'm guy? sure he's he. I'm sure that guy has slept with women. I'm sure he's been with women. That's but what I'm saying. Bit, you haven't? Gotta, no, I've okay, got. Okay, so be, that makes you gayer. No, yeah, may, maybe. I mean, I had a little. The girl that I wrote Will and Grace about, we had a little moment, but you know, it was well, you got to you got to realize you're gay at some point. Yeah, that, I mean, that's, it, that's yeah, what it does happen. Wait, I have to say something about Elton Go John ahead. because he is. He's he a neighbor. Is, he's the president. A dear of, friend. Uh, no, I mean, he's just he's important. Yeah, he he matters. He, in fact, I know is very, was very, very good to the women that carried his children. I want to make sure that I said that because... That, that would make sense Yeah, to me. he is not a guy that did the, I don't want to know, I don't want to have a relationship, I don't want you to know that, you know, this... Ba-. I think people get worried that they're going to be taken advantage of, and they were very clear with us, don't bring, you know, they don't need to know that you are where you live or, and, and, and that all just goes out the window if you're a human being. You wanna have a relationship with this woman. You wanna take care of her. Sure. You know, she's doing something incredible for you. So that's, uh, you know, we, we got very, very close. But is there, is there, a, I mean, she's doing something incredible for you, but for money. And, and, a, and a fair bit of money. You make a very good point. Look, it is a business arrangement, and that, that was what we were, uh, uh, that's what I was going to say re- initially, is that just uh, last month I made the decision that I did not want the girls to meet her because I didn't want them to have to ask that question yet because they haven't asked that question. Husband back in the Texas. The question of where they came from? Yeah, I mean, no, they have, mommy? They, they, yeah, they, they're going to get it. They're going to get it at some point. They haven't. They, they haven't really asked those questions. I mean, the other day, Rose said to me, "My mommy's dead," and I said, "No, that's not. That's not the case." Um, <laughs> the weird part is the husband of the surrogate, who's like back in Texas working at the forklift plant. Your <laughs> wife got knocked up by a gay dude. No, 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 no. She got paid. To get knocked out by a gay dude? Well, shit. How much time do we have here, Fred? I mean, that is such a bullseye. You have no idea how hard it is on these guys, the, the, you know, who are working at, at a Ford dealership, you know, and have to explain why their wife is is pregnant with twins. I mean, it's Congratulations, crazy. Ralph. Uh, where'd you get the new? Where'd you get the new uh, Lexus? By the way, uh, where are those kids? Your wife birthed about oh, eight, nine uh, months ago. <laughs> Be the weirdest. I mean, but I, they just have to say, I'm, what, what do they say? They just go, I'm doing you know, this for these money. These are really progressive guys. I mean, they they have to come to terms with it. They know it. You, you know, look, their their wife is bringing home thirty five grand. You know, uh, that's that's real money. And, no, absolutely. And, uh, I mean, I, you, you know, look, and we we went there too. I mean, it was so bizarre were dropped into the middle of Texas, uh, you know, in this community, and were these two gay guys, and she's explaining to everybody in the neighborhood, you know, th- these are the babies, and, you know, there's so much involved in it, too. It's like, 
you you try to explain you know gestational surrogacy half is fertilized by him half is fertilized by him you know he, i'm carrying his i'm carrying his i mean people's heads want, you know want to explode and then the poor guy is just sitting on his porch watching his tv and freaking out that this is what his life is but, sure you know he can't wait for it to be over and and that was the case with us so um Wow. But, but something amazing, I will mm, tell you one other really please. interesting fact about her. Everything's interesting. So th- so they said to us in the hospital, you're going to you you're going to have her for 3 more days. The the surrogate get breast milk while you can, right? I always call it al- albumin. What is what what the hell is it called? It's like oh, the, colostrum. Yeah, like yeah. The, 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 like the really what's albumin? So that's I, in an egg. That's something. I know, it's a yeah. Mexican yeah. wrestler. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> so they say you you go for Thank it. You. you get as much as you. Yeah, you. You, know, you you know no you you get what you can from Pump this now. woman because she yeah. is going to be gone. She's going to be gone. So I walk into the room and I say to her, um, uh, you know, uh, pixelated person, <laughs> um, uh, let me just tell you this. If you give me uh, milk, if you pump uh, for for my family, uh, I will uh, increase the amount of money that I give you every two weeks. Nine months later, and you'll get a walk on on Super Fun Night. Yes, yes, and and I'll put you on shit. My dad said this year. That's right. Um, you know, she she uh, nine months later. Uh, she finally dried up. They they said that they, that they you know the minute that they leave L A. And they don't see you, and they don't see the babies. The albumin goes away, mm. and she was so incentivized by the money, mm. and as she should be, it was a fantastic way to make a living. She was pumping uh, a gallon of milk a week, a day. Excuse me, a day. A day. Wow. For, for nine months. Wow. Yes. Well, look, yes. I, I hate to sound like a fucking broken record with this shit, but when you show somebody money, magically. Shit gets done. Oh, the way it comes out of their breath. What are we doing? Uh, yes. <laughs> this no, thing here. If you'd said to her, like the way our piece of shit government is set up, look, do what you can, and you know, if you can produce, you can produce, and if you can't produce, you can't produce. Just go home and hang out. Then magically, been gone. she yeah. wouldn't produce. It would have been gone before when by the time she left L.A., which is three days. Yeah, and and this you woman give her hundred bucks at court, and she's on it, man. She just went to town. I mean, it was an unbelievable thing. How would she get it to you? Uh, there is a there is a, a bunch milk of laws, right? there is a milk thing that's set up through FedEx. It goes out on Mondays and Thursdays. Really, and, really, yes. mm-hmm. Jesus! I can't bring backyard fruit into Vegas, and you get to fucking fly milk in by the from way, out of state. By the way, I was listening to that. The other thing you could not travel with is Metamucil. They mm. will stop you with Metamucil, the jumbo size. Uh huh. You can bring the packets. Uh huh. But, but not the jumbo do Metamucil. Not consider bringing that like. 13 gallon one mm-hmm. it expands. yes yeah right something happened well it, i i guess it you know it can explode or something like that so um the milk would show up a gallon a, a, a you, gallon a day isn't that correct because isn't that i, a, I, I don't know that's i'm pretty that's sure i had that right i'm with you look you, you I mean, look you I, pay me enough i'll produce a gallon uh, of milk a day i, I wasn't doing but i'm pretty sure milk, that that's but... what it, that, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's what it was it was a gallon a day Right? Did you ever have it yeah. tested? It feels I mean, like a lot. <laughs> you know, she wasn't sending you soy milk. No, but it's or for twins. Didn't your wife breastfeed? Uh probably. Yeah. I, I, how do you I, verify I, it's breast I, milk? Oh, silly question, but well, I, I mean, knows. yeah, I mean, I guess uh, you know, we're I now, I mean, the girls came out okay. I okay. Mean, but but well, but that well. was the jalapeno pop. Wasn't thing. stepped on with Ovaltine or something. No, but but you know, you're dealing with that Texas diet. I mean, you know, all of a sudden your kids right. are you know have like insane diarrhea, and you you know, it's like, well, I was at Patsy's buffet, you know, last night. That might you know mm-hmm. maybe that did something to it. So. Mm. You know, you you try to wow. You, you know, you're sending those fucking kids. Better not ever give you any lip. It's unbelievable. the amount of money. It's unbelievable. It costs just to get them on this planet and in their little onesies. I know it was crazy. I mean, by the time crazy. the 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 dust settles on this thing, you're a couple hundred grand in just to get these two little guys here on this planet, yes, right? Or it, gals, it, it, I should say. Yeah, two little ladies. Yeah, it was it was not it w- it was not a cheap affair. And and it's funny because I was working with. Will Sasso, who I heard you talking about, sure. I have you know uh, uh, I have a relationship to those calves. I mean, I you know calves. I created um, uh, the the sh- the series uh, shit my dad said uh, for uh, uh, CBS and Will uh, was, sure uh, that. Bill Shatner's sure. Uh, son-in-law, and uh, so I got to see those calves. I mean, he's a he's a guy he sh- he wears shorts to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And listen, whether you're gay or not, if Will says you're gay, you're gay. Yeah. <laughs> 
There's nothing you can One do way or about another. it. Oh, you just weather, have you that? weather the storm. You it, just weather the storm. Oh, Jesus, there they are. It's unbelievable. They're freakish. They're beefsteak tomatoes. I love them. <laughs> they're, they, they're disgusting, actually. Yeah, I'm but, gay but for the, the calves. But that is... Uh, How so did we there? get this shot of his calves? Oh, I, I made sure people. we took them. Smart. Mm-hmm. I do my due diligence. That's nice. Max, what are you working on now? Uh, right now, well, I've had um, two shows canceled on CBS in as many years. Uh, uh, for, uh, le- two seasons ago, we, we did uh, Shit My Dad Says uh, with William Shatner. That uh, was uh, dead in uh, 10 weeks. And then this year, we did um, uh, th- a show called Partners with uh, Michael Urey and David Krumholtz uh, from, from Numbers and Sophia Bush from One Tree Hill. Brandon Routh, uh, who was uh, the Superman that... Uh, mm-hmm. uh, oh, poor that's Seth MacFarlane, Poor Seth MacFarlane. Uh, poor Brandon what what Seth MacFarlane did to him at the end of uh, um, what was the movie Ted Ted, right? Ted yeah I mean it's ter- what terrible. did he do to him at the he end just of Ted flashes cause... up his he sh- flashes up his eight by ten I mean at the end of the movie you know we're clear uh, you know the credits have have rolled and all of a sudden boom the guy that this that's the star of this series that I have you know rolling in two weeks a giant headshot of him and it said and thanks to this guy for destroying the Superman franchise I mean <laughs> it was I mean it it's was not funny yeah it was just like I mean it was just unbelievable so um, yeah he did that to poor Brandon and he, he's a great guy but but so those two shows last two year uh, last two years and then this year now we're working uh, for Showtime I mean trying to make a sitcom work on a network uh, is a very very tough thing, you know. Uh, oh, four, yeah. four camera comedies are very. Have you done them? I did one pilot. I did a a pilot for a four camera for CBS. CBS. I think I want to say. Um, it was. A, How'd that go? Um. Well, it was it's a huge hit. <clears throat> you know, going on season Here six. We are in Glendale, <laughs> live from Glendale. Um. It was, uh, everyone liked the script, and then we went round and round and round on the script for a long time, and then uh, all the chicks got in and tried to put more story drive and more heart and more, uh, take out all the funny, and um, I tried to explain to them that every time you put in a sort of heart moment, you remove a funny moment, because that the opposite of uh, funny is kind of the opposite of heart but yeah but if it's not there the show doesn't work you need you need an element yeah. of you need to care you need one moment when the lead does something that's bigger than himself and then you're fine that's it right not 17 though no and it went on and on and on and then uh, the show came out to be a good show um we basically just listened to all the chicks over there and just did what they told us to do because the battle cry was always look whatever they want just to get on the air and then and then when you get on the air we'll do what we want and uh when we were done i think i said to is it nancy tell him yeah i don't know if she's still over there she's not i said uh, good i said um she was nice enough i said uh whew, that was a slog I and mean, that was a long day and she said well get ready to do a lot more of those and, and I said, uh, well, that's a good sign. For and other then networks. three days later, <laughs> uh, Les Moonves hated it. Yeah. And then he said, we said, what? And he said, yeah, it was like too nice. It was like too too chicky or it's, something. It's and the I said, show. That's, and I said, well, we originally, it didn't start off that way, but it got a lot of estrogen shoved into it. And then it got sent to Les. And then Les was like, no, it's too, you know, too filled with estrogen. And it was like, thanks, ladies, for steering us the wrong direction for nine weeks. And then uh, they picked up uh, accidentally on purpose, and you know that turned out to be a smash hit. I mean, he's the guy who's responsible for Two and a Half Men, and that's the brand of his network, and that's what has to be on his network. And- I don't know why he employs a gaggle of chicks who just talk about heart and story drive they if that's yes. what he's looking for. They say yes to less. I don't know what Les knew along the ride. Not enough. To that point. I mean, if you don't involve him, uh, you, you know. I mean, I've made that mistake twice now, and I and if I, you know, am ever lucky enough to work at CBS again, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I would know that I'd have to really involve him. He'd have to have a creative say so in in what I was writing because if he's if he if that's not going on, he's not invested, and it's not going to work. Well, here's the problem. There's way too many people with an opinion. It's the sort of death of art 
without sounding like a snob, but you have an idea, you have a vision, you have a direction, and then everybody weighs in, and then they start second guessing themselves, and then it becomes a room of your mom's fucking friends staring at wallpaper swatches going, which one did I say I liked the best? You said you liked that one. No, it was that one, and now you go, oh shit, I don't even know what I'm looking at, and it's all fucked. I never want to do it again, by the way. I don't blame you. I mean, it's a com- it's, 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 it's creation by committee, and it, you know, I mean, I, I have to say, it's like, you know, Warren Littlefield, God bless him. When we made Will and Grace, it was really write, the, write what you want to write and uh, whatever works for you. And if these are the people that you want uh, to play these parts, great. Uh, let, let's cast them. Right. I mean, now it's just that is not the way and certainly not at CBS. Why has it changed so much? Or was that just a special time? Um. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know why it has changed so much uh, because you'd think they'd pick up on the fact that they they don't work anymore. I mean, Big Bang, no. Big Bang is uh, the biggest four camera show on television. Uh, what four camera comedy has come off the networks? You know, since uh, you guys remember the Will and Grace, Seinfeld, Raymond, Roseanne, those days. You're not really seeing those. You're not seeing those character-driven um, situation comedies anymore. It just doesn't. It just everything is we. You know, we are men. Uh, uh, you know, the it, it's all that that generic guy thing, and trying to write camaraderie is virtually impossible. Uh, first off, everybody. I'll tell you. It's it's. I'll tell you what doesn't work. It's the prevent defense. Everyone's in prevent defense. Everyone is in don't get fired. I got a cush gig. There's a whole bunch of us that are being overcompensated for really doing nothing. You sit in these meetings with 18 people, two people talk. The other 16 don't weigh in at all. They're, they're gotta, scared to talk. We got to protect our phony baloney jobs. Right. And there's a lot of this, which is counterproductive and fucked up, which is like the network signs off on the guy who's going to play my son and then I chime in and go, he's a big dude and he looks older than 19 and I think he plays more like 24 and then somebody looks at me and goes, shut up, they signed off on them. Yeah, they're like, and he you're gave like, us, he was on numbers for six years. Right. I mean, that's the way that they judge him. You right, know? It, it, the whole thing's a colossal clusterfuck and I want nothing to do with it ever again. And the way... You, you get in business with people that are good and then you trust them to do what they do best, which is, you know, every time I sit down and I get the makeup artist, she goes, what do you want? And I go, I want you to do what you do. Yeah. Do what you do. I don't know shit about makeup. You've been doing it for 20 years. Do what you do. And they go, well, a lot of people are. And I go, I just want you to do your best because that, that, that's, and I understand you know, look, you got to pick the color, but once you pick the color, let the guy who puts it on your car, let him do what he does. Right. Don't keep fucking getting involved. That's what they do. And quite frankly, how many people do you know that are funny? They're not funny. They're not funny at all. They don't, and by the way, this, I'm not funny, but I know funny. Bullshit. It, it, Bullshit. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I want to, I want to keep working, but it's, 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 it's. <laughs> not me. You guys go <laughs> fuck yeah, yourself. I mean, it's, it's incredibly <laughs> difficult to make um, a sitcom. It's it's just oh, because there are so many people weighing in on so many different levels. Uh, you, you all preemptively because they're worried about what less wants. We had a, a I'll never forget it. You probably know Alan Kirschenbaum. Yeah, he's uh, the late great Alan yeah. Kirschenbaum, dear dear friend. And at a certain point. Alan, who was great, had one of the great sort of high-pitched, chewy voices on the planet. Oh, I would just get up there and just go into the Jewish stratosphere with this voice. <laughs> and we were doing, we're now <clears throat> having to whack together our, our four-camera sitcom thing. And they said at a certain point, like, you know, Nancy wants this joke taken out. Right. And Alan said, that's the best joke in the entire sitcom. And you know, someone from Berman Braun or one of the other geniuses said, if Nancy wants it out, just take it out. It'll make Nancy happy. And Alan was like, I've never worked on a show where we remove the best joke. We're taking it out. Why are we hurting ourselves this way? Nancy wants it out. You got to li- you gotta show her something. She wanted this, that, and the other. Give her one. Just listen to one of her notes. Did she and- give a reason for why she wanted it out? Like, no, it- they they're not sophisticated enough it's to give like a reason. That, yeah. They don't, by the way, they give reasons like, you ask a black guy if a cop gave him a reason when he pulled him out of the car, beat the shit out of him. It's like, they do what they want to do. 
they got the fucking billy club and the pistol and the badge. They do what they want. You don't have to go to them. Hey, what's your motivation? To explain yourself, Nancy. Tell they them. No, they just order. go, fuck it. I don't. I want that out. They don't know shit about comedy. But you have to kind of go, all right, all right, let's try to make her happy. Maybe we can pull it out and we can put it back in if it ever goes to air or whatever it is. But he could not believe that we're taking our strongest joke and pulling it out just because one broad has no sense of humor wanted it out. Right. I mean, that that's the, I mean, she's trying to uh, stick to the brand of CBS. You know, it's it's funny because they're the 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 executrixes over there happen to be pretty great. I mean, uh, you know, the women that run the comedy there, uh, uh, a woman uh, called uh, Wendy Trilling and and uh, Nina Tassler. You know, she's a wildly successful network executive, but incredibly uh, hysterically funny. Look, but you know what? You, you, you said it. I mean, that's what happens. You get to that point you're 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 dancing in that room where it's like i could be on the air next this season on monday at 8 30 you know sandwiched between these giant hits and i want to go for it and i'll get that joke on season i'll get that joke on episode two that's what you do because but never before has there been a business where someone who didn't know shit about it gave you so many notes look and specifically at cbs you're dealing with a group of unemployed people on a Monday at four o'clock who are hooked up to, you know, who, to a thing. Testing. Yeah. Testing. You know, they get a hot dog and, and 40 bucks and they really decide, I mean, you want to feel like shit about your work, sit in testing and watch, uh, watch the dial go, (laughs) uh, up and down according to what you've written. It's just, it's a painful, painful Sure. I always say, Carol O'Connor, there would be no Archie Bunker no, if that was tested no, because they would happen. turn it every time he called his son-in-law Meathead, they would turn it down. Every time he called him a Pollock, they would turn it down. Yeah. Every time he made any kind of race-related joke or yelled at his wife to run in the kitchen and get him a beer, they would just turn it down and then they'd go, all right, we tested this Carol O'Connor. He, te- he tested through the basement floor. Right. We got to nicen him up. Let's get him a card again and let's put some pastels on him <laughs> and let's sweeten this up a little. What about, what about some, uh, what about some story drive with him? What network wouldn't want to have had Walter White on their network? What? Not, not a single one. And right. there's not a chance that you could have made that show. On, no on, 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 fucking on a, possible no, way. No, it, it Not just, under their watch. Yeah. All right. Should we do a couple of news stories before we uh, call the night? Yeah. Allison Rosen. The news with Allison Rosen. She read some news from her iPad. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. It's Allison. Allison. And when it's time to wrap it up, she'll sign it off with zip it cut. It's Allison. Allison. So just a quick funny addendum to something that happened on yesterday's show. Uh, there's an article here that says Lubega has revealed that he has been receiving a lot of condolences following the death of Lou Reed. Because mm. remember the caller confused sure. Lou Reed and Lou Bega. Well, yeah. Turns out he's not the only one at all. Uh, Lou Bega thinks that there was a journalist who confused it. I'm not even, I, but I don't know that. Oh, well, they sure. are the same dude. I mean, really. Just, I mean, their I mean, music's no. very similar. God damn! I met Lou Bega. He is. He wrote the most annoying, yeah, one-hit wonder ever. It's fucking uh, just a horrible uh, abortion of a of a piece of cat shit on a hibachi. And when I said to him in 1998, so uh, and, and you know, enjoy it while you can, Lou. Basically, he said, "What do you mean this party's going on forever?" I'll never forget that. I don't know what year, 97, 98. He came on Loveline, and I gave him a sort of eh, version of, oh, must feel good, and, uh, you know, keep it, see if you can keep that party train going. And he's like, what do you mean, man? It's like, I'm just coming into my I'm own. just warming got up. Mambo number six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, yes, yes. yes. He's, he's living in size guest house. That's, <laughs> how, that's how that's going to go. It's a horrible, horrible song. Anyway. ABC is apologizing. Ninety nine, by the way, sir. ABC is apologizing on behalf of a joke that ran on Jimmy Kimmel, yeah. uh, in which youngsters commented on news events, and mm-hmm. there was an ad lib, uh, and he was interviewing the kids, asking them about like what to do about debt. We have a little clip. All right, let's watch Question. this. <clears throat> America owes China a lot of money, one point three trillion dollars. How should we pay them back? You can and all the way over and kill everyone in China. Kill everyone in China? Yeah. Okay, that's an interesting idea. So apparently, 
A- so B- the story by goes, the way, that ABC was doesn't give a fuck about China or Chinese people. They just apologize because they have to. Yeah. Yes, a group called 8020 that identifies itself as a pan Asian American political organization complained. So ABC is apologizing. And ABC says they would never purposefully do anything 80, to upset. 20 was the score they got on the math of their SATs. It's really good. Yeah, it's, it's a good score. Mm-hmm. Uh, they would never do anything to upset the Chinese, Asian, or other communities. Listen, I've seen Red Dawn. You don't want to piss those people off. <laughs> and they're going to edit this out of all future Jimmy Kimmel Live ep- airings of this episode. Mm. Well, that'll... So, that'll, that'll fix that'll it. That'll help everything. everything. Yeah. Look, uh, first off, Jimmy didn't say that's a good idea. He said that's interesting. Secondly, he was a kid obviously making a joke. It's hard to uh, kill and that many Asian, people. Is the Asian people that are upset <clears throat> with the comedy? Yes. No. It's it's two guys well, it's a group. who write oh, letters. Okay. It's a it's a group of nobody. Mm-hmm. I've dealt with these assholes mm-hmm. before. Yeah. You know, Guy Ioki yeah. learns at fucking an office above a Benny <laughs> that his fucking dad owns. He writes a letter like he's somebody, and then everyone has to just you know apologize to it, and they get off on this on this power. Nobody was offended. No one gives a shit. No one, no one believes shit, anything. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, you must have dealt with various groups protesting Will and Grace. Oh, my God. I mean, you know, the big one is, uh, you know, uh, focus on the family when we <clears throat> did the whole conversion thing, you know, that, that we said that, that that stuff does not exist and, uh, you know, that that would, you know, that that just simply damages people. In fact, we did it with Neil Patrick Harris, who was not out at the time, and um, uh, we, did, we did an episode about it and got into a shitload of trouble uh, because we wrote a letter to to them uh, when they said that they were offended they wrote they wrote the they wrote me I think and they said that they were offended uh, by uh, you know my take on this uh, sort of therapy I wrote back uh, a letter basically saying converting that, gay guys to, into straight guys right and I wrote the guy and I said I can read between the lines uh, let's meet at the mother load on Sunday uh, for uh, <laughs> some uh, you know smart uh, cocktail fr- yeah fry, <laughs> fried chicken and uh, rollerblading <laughs> Did he do it? Uh, I mean, I, I just got my ass kicked by Jack Welch. So that's all I remember, you know. Either way, it's always a very small group of people that the networks have to apologize to. But they just to be to be sure to anyone who's listening, I've been behind the scenes. They never give a shit. They just they're trying to not piss people off and make them happy and yeah. get on with their lives. They don't really care about this group or that group. I mean, it's like Obama apologizing to Merkel. Do you think that for a second that he's no mm-hmm. longer going to tap that phone? No. I mean. There's, Is that gay code or no? No, there's, there's, there's nothing. No, I, I actually can bu- talk about when you, when you bang a German yeah, guy. Right, I can actually talk about other things. I can actually talk just about tap other that things. phone. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, you fucking sound, tap sound, that phone. It sounded funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, nobody. Look, I, I, nobody. I mean, people just lie, but you know, they just lie. Look, ninety-six percent of apologies is just, can I get this person to apologize? Right. They whatever they did, they did. Whatever they laughed at, they laughed at. And whatever. they're not going to change. No, that's how our society works and that's right up there with the take that back if someone calls you fat they think you're fat you can tell them to take it back doesn't change the the fact that they think you're fat that's the way it goes does a grown up say take that back um i have i've heard the uh you take that back i've seen enough people's court where people scream at people you have to respect me <laughs> but they're they're wearing pajamas and curlers and sunshine. You know, there's a lot of like you you respect me. and I, i've never you can't shout at people to respect you that, that's done through accomplishment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've now created a society where people scream at other people to respect Show them. that in action. It never really works. All right, let's do one more. I do have a theory about apologies, though, and I think I've said it on this show before. It's very scientific, based on anecdotal evidence. When people say, I apologize, that is not sincere, whereas I'm sorry often is. Mm. Have you noticed this? I never I like ask like- anyone to apologize. I just assume whatever they do, they meant. And Not they if would, they say I apologize. They would do it again. But um, I'm sorry is better than I apologize. I think apologize. it's more, more sincere, yeah. <clears throat> apologize is something you'd write, and I'm sorry something come out of your mouth. Apologize is something where you're trying to convince the person. Mm-hmm. Sort of like when people get on TV, and instead of saying yes, they say absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's like they've, they've supersized their yes. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this is bad news. Mm-mm. The Jonas Brothers have broken up. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's real. It's happened. They've announced their breakup. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, not really given any official reason. However, Nick, Nick wants Jonas, a career. Yeah. he told his brothers he felt trapped. Yeah. Well, he's the one. He's been carrying the other two. Oh, he's, really? He's the one. He's the one. There's Nick. Uh, there's the hot one. Right, Adam? 
I, they're all the look one. fuckable to me. The, the hot one. Oh, they're there. I'm two oh, beers there. away yeah. from there's, just there's bending Joe all and the Kevin. Jonas Brothers over. Yeah. And, Jonas uh, Centipede. Bro- dropping fingers on him like a bowling ball. Watch. Watch Marky. The, Three fingers. It's the Marky uh, Mark uh, Wahlberg thing that's going to happen for Nick. He mm-hmm. wants to off the funky bunch? Yeah, that's. that's is, is Nick to the right? Is Nick in the center? Nick's in the bow tie. Yeah, okay. The Nick's right. in the bow tie, and he is the one that's <clears> going to have the. He's going to have the career? The, yeah. And, and, and th- is it a thre- theatrical career, or is he going to do an, a musical thing? This guy wants to be a movie star. And oh, okay. I, I, and I think people are going to want him to be a movie star. Nothing's going to happen for the one in the silver tie, and the one in the middle will come out in 25 minutes. Oh, really? Yeah, it's going to happen. I mean, he's... Really? Uh, yeah. Well, can't you see it? Uh, yeah. The is eyewear. Is that Joe? The eyewear, the, mm. sh- the sheen in the hair. Mm. Mm. Black on know. black shirt. How's the gaydar yeah. working for you, Max? It's pretty good. Pretty strong? Yeah. The force is strong? Yes, I mean, you, if you need to... do. We, we, I don't have good. any gaydar. It's just yeah. you and me. Can gaydar In be this taught? It's just you and me. Can gaydar no. be taught? Because I have had crushes on gay men before, and I've thought that everyone else realized, and I was like, how am I the last one to realize this? No, it's it's like you're either funny or you're not. I mean, and you either know... You know what I... You know how you can do it? You can just take a piece of paper and put, like... Uh, uh, the newspaper down right and and slide something over a face and you can see at a certain point if your gaydar is really strong you can tell like by the time you've uncovered the eyes mm. you know you can, you can see you can gayness see in the forehead yeah you can see it in the crow's feet wow. i did that with a peanuts cartoon once and it works uh, it Pepper absolutely patty. works Pepper and patty big dyke <laughs> i knew it well you see i don't have i don't have any gaydar because i was we're back talking to max and and i was talking to him and he said i heard you talking about the twins and he said but you know we we did it differently i can't remember how you phrased it but we we have to do it i just knew i was getting nowhere we're with doing you. it different yeah. Yeah, and i, I was I, like I, what do you mean we why do you have to why did you and your wife have to do it differently than me and my wife i was still i i don't i don't i don't judge we did it differently. i don't know i think you said oh are you gay yeah and i want to turn around and be like hello <laughs> i right, listen Fa- i mean fantastic but i mean you uh i'm, I'm color and cock blind that's fantastic. That's it me. Was, That's mean, just who I am. Dude, are you gay? But that being said, uh, you know, this thing where we're trying to uh, basically take gay guys and turn them straight, like you alluded to Conversion, earlier, yeah. I don't believe that works. But I would like to take some straight dudes and turn them gay. That's something I'd That's like. That's easy. I would like to focus on that because they're much, I've said it a million times, they're just better citizens. They recycle. They keep their neighborhoods nicer. The real, real estate value goes up. You get, to, you get to two incomes, more discretionary income. They're not driving around the big minivans and vans are fucking up the roads and everything. Lots of Miatas and shit like they that. Push a two lot seaters. Of money into the economy via surrogates and things of that nature. Exactly. I've always Good said there back. should be a fucking voucher. I mean, you should get a tax relief for being gay. You're not what what well, what's the opposite let's just say the antithesis of a professional gay couple let's say like yeah. eric and yourself yeah before you had the kids and the having what you guys went through right. with the children is not something that most gay couples go through some adopt some choose not to have kids at all but either way let's just say the number of years you and your partner eric were together before the children right Dual income. Spending a lot of money. Spending a lot of money and a lot of tax, paying a lot in fucking taxes. Flipping houses all over LA. Versus nothing. No, nothing. Not using the libraries. Not nine kids in school. Now, just go the opposite of that. Okay, so what if we had an economy? What if we had in a society where we had a bunch of Max and Eric's floating around versus single mom, nine kids, probation officers, Two, two in juvie, two in the joint. The system, what the system costs, what it, the taxing of the system versus the guys that just keep putting it in. You guys never stop rowing. And gay guys don't get divorced like uh, heterosexual people do. They just That just doesn't happen. In terms of the we system, if you just look at the system as a plant and the, the gay is like, sunshine fertilizer and water we're root rot that's right the straight guy and and all right so you have you make 40 grand a year and you have three kids all right it's a little little root rot in there but you make no money and you have nine kids you're trying to kill the tree 
It's a tree, and if it gets more sunshine and more fertilizer and more water than it does the root rot or the shade, it's going to survive. But the second it stays dark for 19 hours a day and it only gets watered once a month versus twice a week, it's going to start dying and it's not going to bear as much fruit. It's Speaking of fruit, amazing. sorry, Go ahead. but the gays, yes. the gays are the fertilizer, they're the water, and they're the sunshine to this societal tree. Watch what happens with all the the, the gabies. Watch how these mm. gabies turn out to be good citizens of America. It's going to be very interesting to see that generation come to be, how they spend, what they become, what what their career paths are. Sure. Because daddies work. Both daddies work. They have sure. a very different thing that's going on in the house. Got to write a children's book, The Gay Tree. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't no knot hole. <laughs> Uh, all right, yeah. let's bring it home. That's the news. I'm Allison Rosen. Zip it, cunts. That was the news with Allison Rosen. Max, um, I'm trying to think of what to plug for you since I don't have anything on here other yeah, than you're I'm working okay. on a bunch I of mean, stuff. Look just, at that. Let's keep our fingers crossed. So that secure. You, yeah, let's just hope we see a show on Showtime uh, after Christmas. Let's leave it at that. All right, well, when it gets on, yeah. then you come back, okay. and we'll talk it up. Thank you so much. Kiss those little girls for me. I will. Thank you for having me. So, uh, by the way, us, Amalfi, tonight, John Lovitz out there, our last show of the year at Amalfi. So if you want to have a little mangrena, a little pizza, come on and say hi. And uh, Bevmo, now mangria available in California and Washington locations. Me, Glendora Bevmo, coming up uh, this Friday. I'll be in a great mood because I'll got a call time at 6.30 a.m. at Dana Point. So I'll be in a great mood about 5 o'clock when I'm driving home from Dana Point. So until next time, it's Adam Carolla, Riles from Rosen, Max Munchnik, and Bald Brian saying mahalo. I oh. mostly handle the pussy. Hey, kitties, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and catch any podcasts you might have missed at youtube.com slash Adam Carolla. That's youtube.com slash me.